exhaustive list today, but it's a thorough list for everyone to see that there are amazing benefits of a high cash value policy designed for the infinite banking concept. One, guaranteed growth of your money. Steve, as you know, this cash value growth is always increasing from one year to the next. It's compound growth. It's not tied to the market, and people are going to see their cash value grow larger from one year to the next. It's pretty amazing to see that guaranteed growth of money. That's a huge advantage. Huge advantage. Access to the liquid cash. This is the banking feature of the policy that the cash is not tied up. If you have an IRA or a 401k, you have to wait till you're 59 and a half to physically withdraw all that money, not in an infinite banking policy. That cash is liquid 30 days after you start the policy. The money inside the policy is growing tax advantage, and you're able to use that money completely tax-free. There's a caveat there. You have to structure the policy correctly, which is what we help you with. But I think this is one of the greatest benefits of all when it comes to a properly structured whole life policy, Steve. One, because we don't know what future tax rates are going to be. And two, the more tax-free money you have in your overall portfolio, the better future you're going to have. You're not going to be reporting this income or these loans to your CPA or to your accountant. You truly can use this money 100% tax-free if done correctly. Yeah, Gary, when I first heard about coming to your own banker and Nelson Nash's infinite banking concept years ago, I'd been a practicing trust in the state's attorney for many years. And, you know, when I found out that you could put cash, extra cash within a policy, first of all, it changed my understanding of the whole life. It corrected some misnomers I had. But I had been doing tax planning and asset protection for years. So, I was trying to get those things accomplished through other legal means. And here I had an asset in front of me that actually provided tax advantages under 7702, the code, which most, most people don't know about, by the way, they know all about 401k, but not 7702. So you got that tax advantage growth and the guaranteed growth. Where else can you know, in, in my mind at that time, where else can I know what I'm going to have in 10, 15, 20 years? So pretty powerful advantages. It's really powerful, Stephen, you as an estate attorney, to hear that story. It's neat to see the shift in your thinking. We want other estate attorneys out there to go through that same shift in their thinking or CPAs, because when you really understand all these benefits that we're going to go through here in a few minutes, you'll recognize this is an asset that adds tremendous value to someone's portfolio. Yes. And I had previously understood some stereotypes to be true which were whole life as a slow growth, primarily death benefit, kind of an asset that seemed rather expensive. So my, my crossing paths with Nelson Nash's book definitely allowed me to understand that you can utilize high cash value whole life and properly design it to obtain all these great advantages. There are also fixed costs with flexible premium options. I love sharing with clients that they're not locking into this premium amount for the rest of their lives. The premium is flexible. And because we're only using whole life insurance, the cost for that whole life is fixed. They're not going to get a bill for increased premiums later. They're not going to start losing cash value. This gives someone a lot of peace of mind. There's also high contributions allowed. I don't want to say it's unlimited, Steve, but the contribution amounts are virtually unlimited. The policies also have collateral opportunities where you can walk into a bank, you can put your death benefit up as a collateral assignment. You can also collateralize cash value. In other words, you can use the asset while you're alive. Policy loans can be used to purchase assets and pay off debt. We're going to look at that a little bit further today as we go through an actual policy loan. And this is huge because we see wealthy people doing this all the time. They leverage assets. We can take this policy loan, use the cash value, buy more assets, and we're leveraging the policy throughout our life. Your total cash value earns interest and dividends, even if you have a policy loan. 
What's so remarkable is when you take policy loans, the insurance company is giving you a loan from their general account. They don't physically remove that money from your cash value. You as a policyholder are still earning interest and dividends on your total cash value, which is remarkable because that compound interest growth curve doesn't get broken. You're still earning compound interest on total cash value, even though you have a loan. True compounding. True compounding. This is not an exhaustive list, but you can see the many benefits, the many pros of infinite banking. Let's take a look at some of the downsides. One is this is not a short-term investment. We're not saying that you can't use the policy loan feature to make short-term investments. We're saying that the policy itself is not a short-term investment. If you're thinking that you want to invest money for two or three or four years, infinite banking would not be for you. You want to consider funding a policy for at least seven to 10 years. The longer, the better. The more cash you put into the policy, the better. But it's not a short-term play. Also, not 100% of your premium is available in cash value in the first year. If you go put your money in a money market account or a savings account, you have access to 100% of that money. In a high cash value whole life policy that's designed for the infinite banking concept, Depending on your age, your health, the amount of premium you put in, how long you fund a policy, you might have somewhere between 75% and 95% of your premium available in first year cash value, which is still great, but not 100% of your premium is available in year one. Barry, just to clarify, if your play is shorter term, you still do have access to cash in your one. However, what you're saying is that it just gets better over time. That's right. It's kind of like capitalizing a business. If you start a business, you're going to have some years of capitalization, cost to get the business growth going. We see that in a policy. Yep. The other downside is there are interest charges on policy loans. When you take a policy loan, the insurance company is going to charge you interest for that loan. You need to be aware of what those interest charges are. Some companies today are charging 4% interest. Some companies are charging 8% interest. So before you purchase a high cash value whole life policy for the purposes of infinite banking, you should understand what are the interest rate charges that are going to be associated with policy loans. Lastly, the policy does require an application and qualification. You have to qualify for the policy. Not everyone out there, Steve, is going to end up qualifying for a policy depending on health or age. However, people that can't get qualified can own a policy on a spouse. They can own policies on kids or grandchildren. So we're going to work very hard to help you get a policy if you specifically aren't able to get qualified. Mm -hmm. The pros of infinite banking far outweigh the cons of infinite banking. And if you compare this to other types of retirement accounts, a properly structured whole life policy and the infinite banking concept in most cases are far better. We've talked about a lot of these benefits here, but the comparison I'm making is to a 529 plan, a 401k or a 403b, an IRA, a Roth IRA, in comparison to a cash value whole life insurance policy that's properly structured for infinite banking. And look at all those red X's. Those red X's are showing us you're not getting these benefits if you have a traditional retirement plan, but you are getting all these benefits if you have a high cash value whole life policy. Yeah, and I especially love tax-free income in retirement. So that's number four down. And that's such a powerful thing when you see that illustrated and how that works to help people have extra liquidity and extra income in retirement. Yeah, tax-free income is a huge part of that. It's one more advantage of having a properly structured policy. Yeah, I think the living benefits are also huge. Today's marketplace with a lot of concerns about future health care for people living longer. Yeah, it is called life insurance, not death insurance. So we do teach people about the living benefits of the policy. Having access to that liquid cash for policy loans, as we're going to get into today, is one of those living benefits. Mm -hmm. Well, Steve, with all the pros and cons we've talked about, 
someone might be asking, well, what is infinite banking? You're telling us the pros and cons, but what is it actually? It's a uniquely designed, properly structured, whole life, high cash value insurance policy. And it must be with a participating dividend paying mutual life insurance company. The mutual is key because mutual insurance companies pay dividends and those dividends come back to us as policyholders. Infinite banking is a process. This is a system for people to become their own bank by taking control of the banking function in their lives. As you mentioned, Nelson Nash created the concept. He wrote a book called Becoming Your Own Banker. We highly recommend purchase the book, read the book, and not just once. Read it several times because there are true and correct financial principles taught in the book that you don't learn in school. Other names for IBC, Bank on Yourself, the wealth maximization account, cash flow banking, private family banking. However, don't be fooled. Not everyone out there that claims they're practicing infinite banking are actually going to give you the correct policy. So you've got to be aware that you follow all this criteria. Yes, you got to have somebody skilled that knows how to design these policies. For me, from this slide, the participating mutual is something that people need to really dive into understanding why that's so important. These mutuals are a gift. You're participating in the welfare of the company. Those dividends coming back are paid to the policyholders to take a little portion of the success of the company there. That's just such a powerful aspect of this whole strategy because of the tax advantages of those dividends. Really a cool part of this. I agree, Steve. And we only work with the top mutual insurance companies in the industry. We've done all the vetting. I've done this now nearly 25 years. So as a client, you listening, coming in, looking at your own numbers, rest assured, we've taken care of that vetting for you. You will only get the best of the best of the mutual insurance companies from us. In a properly structured high cash value whole life policy used for infinite banking, there are three main things you want. Maximum cash value growth, two, minimum insurance cost, and three, we want to teach you how to use the policy loan feature to generate more wealth in your life. Something to be aware of here, never use IUL for IBC. IUL is indexed universal life. There are reasons why not to use IUL for IBC. The first is surrender charges. You don't have most of your cash value available because of surrender charges. And usually those surrender charges will last 10 to 15 years. There are also increasing insurance costs in IUL. And when you see an IUL illustration, generally the returns shown are unrealistic because the growth is tied to the market and the market does go up and down in value but the IUL illustrations only show the positive up years. They don't account for the negative down years. Yeah, and I'll just echo that, Barry. I like high cash value whole life because this is a safe bucket. If somebody's worried about the return and projected returns and these kind of things, the thing is that this is a guaranteed return, right? So it's a safe bucket, and that's why it's perfect for IBC, because you want to be able to fall back on those guarantees. Really, every other kind of life insurance cash value just shifts the risk to the consumer, just something to be aware of. Thanks for reminding us of that, Steve. Well, how to capitalize on the infinite banking concept and establish a plan. When clients come to me, sometimes the question is asked, well, Barry, how much premium should I put into a policy? It's really up to you but I'm gonna give you some guidance here in regards to an answer to that question. You wanna look at somewhere between 10% and 25% of your gross annual income. Round numbers, if you're earning $100,000 a year, 10,000 to 25,000 a year can go into a policy. So let's say you lock in at 20,000 a year. That 20,000 a year premium is a flexible premium, meaning if there was a year that you needed to reduce down to the minimum of say, three or four or 5,000, you could. So when you look at your own numbers, you're going to determine what makes the most financial sense for you. And then we design the policy to meet all the criteria that we've just talked about. Access to the liquid cash, 
minimum death benefit, maximum cash value, all of those will be a part of the policy we designed for you. Steve, let's look at some real numbers. This is our 20,000 a year example. We see the total premium going into the policy year one, and we're focused on cash value growth. What's interesting is if this were a traditional old style whole life policy, the first year cash value would be zero and maybe even the second year cash value would be zero. But what we see here, because this policy is properly designed with what's called a paid up additions writer or PUA, the majority of your premium goes into cash value. Year one, we see the 15,353 and notice this cash value continues to grow larger every year. Because of the compound interest and the dividend that you earn, you'll notice that from one year to the next, your cash value is always getting larger than the year prior. And I'll just point out a few examples here. From year eight to year nine, we see the cash value grow from 173,000 to 201,000. That's a $28,000 gain, you put in 20,000. Year 14 to year 15, the cash value grows from 367 to 406. Steve, that's a $38,000 gain, almost doubling the amount of money in growth based on what you put in with that 20,000 premium. So this is how it gets better over time. Because of the compounding. That mm. compound growth is huge. And think about it like this. If you have a stock or a mutual fund or an ETF, You'll hear often financial advisors talk about compound interest. You can't have compound interest growth in a volatile stock market investment. It doesn't work because you can lose gains. You can lose dividends. We're talking here about true compound interest. And the only way to get that, Steve, is when you have a guarantee. And of course, you got tax-free growth here, Barry, right? So that's a factor as well. It's huge. Yep. All the cash value growth you see here can come to you tax-free if done correctly. In our second example, we're showing an additional dump in. We call it a lump sum in year one. We still have the same 20000 a year premium, but notice in year one, this client is putting in an additional $80,000 as a lump sum. By the way, this is an illustration for a 35-year-old female in good health, 20000 a year premium, year one. Also, she is adding an $80,000 lump sum for 100000 total premium going into the policy. Steve, what's so amazing here is look at this column here that says net cash value. Year one, $94,000. What does that mean? 94% of her premium goes straight to cash value in the very first year. Yep. So if someone did want to get going early with some kind of a real estate investment or something, they certainly would have that available. That's right. Barry, for the more analytical thinkers among us, if someone's wondering how much of this is paid up additions, how much is base, is that something that you want to offer any feedback on? Yeah, you'll hear often out there in the internet world, Get a 90-10 split policy, get an 80-20, get a 70-30, get a 60-40. Those ratios are PUA to base ratios. Not everyone out there should be getting a 90-10, nor should everyone out there be getting a 60-40. What we do is we look at your situation specifically, your goals. What do you want to accomplish? A 90-10 might be right for you, but a 70-30 might be right for you. What we generally see, Steve, is this. In a 90-10 split, the early cash value years are amazing. That's what we're seeing here in this policy. In a 70-30 or an 80-20, we see more cash value generally in the mid to later years. Year 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 forward, those 80-20 policies will provide someone with greater income in retirement as opposed to a 90-10. So when I meet with a client, Steve, I'm usually showing them multiple illustrations so they can see the difference. And then we want to definitely go with what the client's goals are and move forward with the policy that best meets those goals. Awesome. 
I think if you go less than 9010, then you have a little more room if wanting to add later, correct? Potentially, with these policies, you get a growing death benefit. And because of the death benefit grows, the MEC limit grows. So there is still opportunity to put in a little bit more cash. But if someone comes in and says, hey, Barry, you know, I want to put in $200,000, they wouldn't be able to get that into this policy if they started it this way. Mm-hmm. Once a policy is in force, the MEC limit is what you put in year one. And then it grows slightly, but it wouldn't grow from 100,000 to 200,000 the next year. In those cases where clients want to put a lot more money in, we simply have them start a second policy. I've done that myself. I believe you've done that. A lot of my clients have started second policies. You can own multiple policies. Yeah. But also if people are reading Nelson's book, when he's talking about paying extra in, in terms of paying more than you're really being charged for interest and things like that, I think he's getting at the point, right? Determining how much you can put into your policy within the MEC limits. He is, and check this out. If you put $100,000 into this policy, this particular company allows you to continue to put in 100,000 years one through seven. So you can roll around to year two and even though we're showing 20,000 for the premium, you could throw in an additional 80,000. Oh, interesting. That's a yeah. lot of flexibility. A lot of flexibility. And the minimum premium on this policy is only about 5,000 a year. So mm-hmm. think about that range of flexibility. Someone could go up to 100,000 a year for seven years, but they can also go down to 5,000 a year in any year they choose. Barry, I'm glad you brought up flexibility because that's a huge thing that people need to absorb about these policies. There is so much flexibility in these policies. So what Barry just said, you could pay as little as 5000 That's the base. Or you could go up in this particular case, you could go up and pay a lot more because of that initial lump sum. I know we always talk about like saying, say you want to stop paying premiums in year 20 or something. You could also do a reduce paid up so you could basically just reduce the death benefit a little bit, right? Is that Am I speaking correctly on that? That's right. The myth out there about whole life insurance we hear from these financial entertainers is you got to pay a premium your whole life. That isn't true. Not so at all. You, yeah, what you just addressed with the flexibility is key, but also there can come a point in your life where you completely stop funding, yet your cash value still grows and you still earn dividends. What I want to point out also here, Steve, is check this out. In year three, the total contributions are 140,000. And look at the cash value, 139,262. This client has almost broken even with cash value in the third year, which is remarkable. Mm -hmm. Because in a traditional whole life, it might take 18, 20, 22 years to see that break even point. Because these policies are properly structured and we're focused more on that PUA, the cash value growth, your break even time frame is sooner. Now, if we look at our first example, the break even time frame is year six. You see that right here with the 120 and the 120. Yeah. So depending on how you fund, depending on your age, your health, all that plays a role into where the break even point is. However, that doesn't mean you have to wait that long to access policy loans. You can access policy loans in the very first year if you want to. Nelson talked often about letting the policy capitalize. It's like capitalizing a business that we talked about earlier. Give it a few years before you take policy loans, simply because then you wind up with more cash value in that example. Does that mean you really have all your money back at that point, Aaron? That's right. Yeah. So that's something to think about, too, when people think about whether they should buy term and follow the entertainer advice or whether this makes sense. Well, they've got their money back in year six. Year six here, roughly year three here, which Mm -hmm. is remarkable. People looking at whole life insurance or talking negatively about whole life insurance don't understand what we've just addressed here, Steve. This is a powerful financial tool. One, you see access to cash, the guarantees, 
but you're not having to wait 20 years to use your policy. Yeah, me, my realization of this stuff is why we're here, Gary, why insurance in the States exists. You're putting out correct information. You're educating the public to see really how a properly structured whole life policy works and why they should have it in their portfolio. Definitely. Steve, let's look at infinite banking and policy loans. We're going to put some numbers together. We're going to talk about this client taking a policy loan and then the logistics of how a policy loan works. Hopefully we'll dispel some myths too, Barry. And yes, we're going to dispel some myths. Steve, we're going to show a $40,000 loan from either policy in year three. In year three of the policy that we see on the screen right now, there's $51,000 of cash value. So she could easily take a $40,000 loan. And in year three of the second illustration, we showed earlier the $139,000. So there's plenty of money here for a $40,000 loan. And we talk a lot with real estate investors about this kind of an early policy loan strategy. That's right. If you're a real estate investor, you should definitely be using your policy to buy real estate. That's what I personally do. I've been a real estate investor for 17 years. I use a policy loan for the down payment portion of my real estate. I still get bank financing, but I use the policy loan because I'm still making money. And we're going to see that in a minute. So we showed in the first illustration, the cash value was 51000 And in the second illustration, the cash value was 139000 We said it would be very easy for her to take a $40,000 loan because the cash is there. What she's going to do for this loan is she's going to either go online and make their loan request, or she's going to call the insurance company at their 800 number. The insurance company is going to give her a loan from their general account for the 40000 The insurance company doesn't physically remove the money from her cash value. They put a lien against it. So what that means, her 51000 or her 139000 whatever policy she has, it's all still earning interest and dividends. There is no break in the compound growth curve. She's still making money, Steve, on her total cash value, even though she has a loan. Yeah, and this is key to the strategy, right? So they're not borrowing their own money. That would be a common misnomer. That's correct. She is not borrowing her own money. The other great thing, there's no credit check when she takes the loan. There's no application. And yep. Steve, the insurance company doesn't question her, well, what are you using the money for? They don't care because the loan is collateralized by the cash value, but it's also collateralized by the death benefit. If she happens to pass away, the policy loan and any outstanding interest would simply come off of her total death benefit. Right. So there's really no formal repayment terms. Right. We're going to encourage her and all of our other clients to be an honest banker. But what you're suggesting or alluding to is they get to pay the loan back however they want. It really is their own bank. So if they want to pay it back over a 20 year time frame, a 12 month time frame, or they don't want to make a payment for two years because they're a real estate investor doing some rehab on some property, all that's flexible as to how they want to pay it back. We get a lot of questions about policy loans and people saying, why wouldn't I just go get another loan from a bank? Or why wouldn't I maybe take equity financing from a property? And they can certainly do that. The thing that I always immediately think is that they're not aware of all of these advantages. That This is an on-demand payment with no strings attached. It's about the best loan that you can envision in my experience. It is. Nelson often used to say, and you'll read this in his book, Becoming Your Own Banker, you finance everything you buy. Whether you finance and get a loan or you pay cash, you finance everything you buy. Because if you use cash 100% of the time, there's a lost opportunity cost. If you go out and buy a car with cash, that cash is no longer working for you. What we're showing by using a policy loan with your properly structured policy, there is no lost opportunity cost because you're still earning compound interest on your total cash value. That's the point. That's the power of what we want to show here. And we're going to look at the real numbers. I want you to imagine 
that this straight line represents the dollar amount of zero. When you take a policy loan, you're going to pay the loan back over time and get back to zero once the loan is paid off. We're going to use a 5% interest rate. And Steve, this interest rate of 5%, that interest goes back to the insurance company. One of the big myths out there about infinite banking is you earn the interest on the loan. That is not true. You pay the 5% interest back to the insurance company, but the way you're still making money is on your total cash value. You still make money, you still earn interest and dividends on your total cash value, but the interest does in fact go to the insurance company. Yeah, and I love an example you did recently because you laid out the fact that even if the policy cash return was around 4.8% and the loan cost is five, that the policy would still come out ahead because of the compounding effect. Yeah, and we're going to use those same numbers today because that's about what the rate of return is internally on both of these policies. 4.8% is a net tax-free return. What that means is if you compared that to a stock market investment, someone would have to earn between 8 and 10% in that market-based account to net a 4.8% tax-free return. So I say 4.8%, that's remarkable in a policy that you don't have to worry about and you're going to be making money every year with no stock market volatility. Absolutely. Steve, I have the loan analysis calculator here. We're going to show her paying back this $40,000 loan over a four-year time frame. Again, she can decide how she wants to pay it back. We have the loan rate at 5%, 48 months. She's going to make a payment back to the loan of $921 a month. This is an amortization schedule. So that $921 a month is going to both principal and also interest. But notice what happens. Because she's making a payment back every month, the balance of the loan is going down, which means this column I've just highlighted, the interest she's being charged is also going down. Yes, and that's another subtle thing that people aren't aware of. You go get a bank loan and you're paying it off you're certainly not going to get have additional capital there that then you could utilize, right? So not only is the amount of interest going down, but also you have additional capital if you needed it. That's right, because that money is in your cash value, so you can take additional loans. Yeah, and I'll also point out, you know, this 5%, these rates are generally considered nominal compared to what's in the market. You're looking at car loans, you're looking at mortgage rates. There's a lot of advantages that kind of need to be brought out because they're subtle and people want to lump these policy loans in with all other kinds of loans, which is just not accurate. It isn't. Mortgages today, seven, eight, nine percent. We're telling you, you can get a policy loan at five percent. Well, right. And if you're a real estate investor, you know that hard money for down payments and things like that, definitely going to be higher than five uh, percent. Yeah. And in most cases, higher than nine percent. Steve, over the course of these four years, she would have paid a total amount of $4,216 of interest. You see that here at the bottom. So let's remember that number, 4216, as we come back to the whiteboard. Yeah. That is interest that went back to the insurance company. But remember, her $40,000 didn't leave her cash value. So we want to see what that money grows to. So, Steve, the way we look at this, her internal return on the policy is 4.8%. That's a net tax-free number. So we're going to use that as we calculate what's happening to her $40,000. I've got a future value calculator. We put in the $40,000. Internal rate of return, 4.8% over the same 48 months, that four-year time frame. And you'll notice the 40,000 grows to 48,448. Mm -hmm. And the difference between the two numbers is $8,448. Barry, for people that are, again, analytical, how did you figure out the 4.8%? I took her internal growth rate based on her age and her premium funding to determine what that cash value is going to grow at. Now, it could be higher depending on dividends. But as it sits today with dividends currently 
she's going to earn 4.8% every single year, completely tax-free. Well, that's impressive because what you're saying is the 5% loan rate cost 42.16. 42.16. Yet, what did she earn on her cash value? Eight thousand double that. 48. Yeah, so she comes out ahead, we're going to say a positive $4,200. Hmm. So by her taking a loan, Steve, she still makes money. She still comes out ahead and she's able to use the policy to her advantage. The power of what we're looking at is better than free cash because there's always an opportunity cost to cash. <laughs> That's right. As Nelson said, you finance everything you buy. But what we've shown here is a positive $4,200. But let's take it one step further. And you hit on this a little bit earlier. What if she decided to pay her loan back at a higher rate? Let's say she gets a quote from a bank for a car or a business loan or a hard money loan or a mortgage. And they're saying, well, we're going to charge you 7% interest. What would happen if she chose to pay her loan back at 7% and have that extra 2% go back into her policy cash value? Right. This is stuff that Nelson talked about a lot in his book. We're coming back to the loan analysis calculator. And this option right here that says alternate payback, we're going to bump the 5% to 7%. It only changes the payment by $37 a month. You would think more, but this 2% increase now goes to her cash value. So she's able to take this extra money that she would have paid a third-party financial institution, Steve. This is what we want to be clear on. This extra 2% is now going back into her policy cash value, not to a bank, not to a credit union, not to a hard money lender. So although it's $1,700, imagine her doing this throughout her life. As she continues to use the infinite banking feature of the policy, all this extra interest can go back to her. She capitalizes on the interest rather than paying that to a third-party financial institution. Right. Not only is she being an honest banker, she's actually storing additional cash in her bank, which then leads to more cash value growth down the road. Exactly. She's creating more wealth along the way for herself rather than creating more wealth for the banks or those financial institutions. This is such a powerful strategy for anybody, but particularly for investors of some kind. It's such a great way to have momentum, to gain momentum. Agreed. Steve, we've talked about this all through the webinar, the benefits of high cash value whole life, guaranteed compound interest growth, access to liquid cash for the infinite banking concept, and tax-free use of that money if done correctly. We highly recommend that everyone add this to their portfolio because of the tremendous benefits. Great examples, Barry. It's always exciting to unpack this for people if you're just getting into this. One of the ways that you can keep getting educated is to check out our YouTube channel right here. Every aspect of Infinite Banking covered or we're always releasing new videos and webinars as well. Pretty much anything that you're interested in about the strategy or about whole life or life insurance in general, I definitely find on our YouTube channel and we're actively putting videos up. Also, I want to encourage you to subscribe to our channel. If you're watching this video on YouTube, you can also put questions, comments into the comments section. You can also go to our website at insuranceandestates.com under resources, also articles on pretty much anything that you want to learn about. And of course, I want to encourage you to look at your own numbers. Barry's calendar link is going to be wherever this video is. You can schedule a one-to-one -one and look at how this will impact your wealth building scenario. So definitely encourage that. Appreciate it, Barry. Thank you, Steve. What a great webinar. I'm excited for people to understand more thoroughly what infinite banking is and how they can capitalize on a properly structured whole life policy for their own portfolio. Awesome. Look at your own numbers. Click the link to learn more, schedule a one-on-one. -on -one. Thanks for watching.